Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Nano Dimensions third quarter 2024 conference call. My name is Wyatt, and I'm your operator for today's event. On the call with us today are Yoav Stern, CEO and member of the Board of Directors, Tomer Pinchas, CFO and COO, and Julian Letterman, VP Corporate Development. Before we begin, may I remind our listeners that certain information provided on this call may may contain forward-looking statements, and the safe harbor statement outlined in today's earnings press release also pertains to statements made on this call. If you have not received a copy of the press release, please view it in the Investor Relations section of the company's website. A replay of today's call will also be available on the Investor Relations section of the company's website. Yoav will begin the call with the business update, followed by a question and answer session, at which time the management team will answer questions. I would now like to turn the call over to Nano Dimension CEO and member of the Board of Directors, Yoav Stern. You may please go ahead. Thank you very much, Wyatt. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for participating this morning and this afternoon. Uh, I, I want to preempt and tell you that uh, I'm talking to you today from Frankfurt, which is the main uh, one of the main annual events of from next, which is the industry, additive manufacturing industry uh, trade show. And it's the most successful one that Dan have ever seen. I've never seen so much interest in our booth and in what we're doing, both in the existing nano and the excitement around the two acquisitions, some of which are already having uh, people from other companies coming and visiting other comp- and the company means other acquisition targets that uh, we mentioned coming and visiting us. Uh, so with this excitement and uh, looking forward to uh, this excitement translating to numbers, uh, I'll start by uh, describing a little bit uh, on the slide of the numbers uh, mentioned that $15 million of revenue is the best third quarter ever and one of the best quarters ever we had. Is 22% over last year, same period. Gross margin is 48%, which is up from 44, and adjusted gross margin, which which is without non-cash expenses, is 51, up from 48. This is, gentlemen and ladies, extremely important because the business model of all companies in our industry suffer from gross margins and therefore from lack of profits. When we get to 55% gross margins, we start to show profits and substantial. And this is very, very exciting. And no less exciting is the net cash burn. Gentlemen and ladies, we turned around another dimension from $16 million burning per quarter last year to $3 million net cash burn. And we're close to break even in cash burn. And this is only none without the two acquisitions smaller nano, which we cut expenses by reducing headcount uh, dramatically and still not harming the revenue and the growth, uh, which comes to show you that the direction to profitability, which we are committed to, is well ahead. Uh, Some business updates. Yes, we announced and close to closing desktop metal acquisition. And right after that, Mark Forge acquisition, two of the main companies of this industry. In parallel, we have notable sales, first time to applied materials, University of Dayton, and the leading very well-known aerospace and defense company, which we can't mention its name for obvious reasons. In parallel to all this, we are in front of our annual general meeting, should be held in December 6th. And yes, we are fighting descendant shareholders from uh, Think Toronto, which is trying to dismantle the company. And we as a board recommend to everybody, don't vote. The company is growing and will bring return much more than just taking it now, selling it in pieces and trying to get pennies on the dollars. The vote cutoff for this General meeting is December 1st. The next slide will show you a little bit of the graphic presentation of the numbers. 
Slide number five is showing that the revenue, the way it grew from last year, the gross margin growth, and the reduction in net cash burn from the same period last year. The three new customers are not the only three new customers that we had this quarter, but we're just highlighting those for you because it means a lot for our growth of, again, I'm talking about right now, original nano before test of metal and before Mark Forge, which is a whole new story, which I hope will be, you'll, be hear, you'll hear about it in details in the next conference calls. So those are not included here. If you would want to have a snapshot in slide number seven, you will see what we did with Nano over the years that you gave, since you gave us the cash about uh, three and a half years ago, and we were a steward of the cash and promised you we are not going to spend it until we get into large acquisitions. So we did spend it on smaller acquisitions, and for about two and a half years, and as a result of that, got attacked by a kind of uh, activist or, or whatever you call them, shareholders that, that they were practically interested in the cash that the company has. But we got to the point where we did use the large cash that we raised from you, and we used it for the good reason at the right prices. And we acquired two large companies, and if you look, how we moved from left side of the slide to the right side of the slide from one technology and one type of machine in electric manufacturing electronics into technologies with dozens of types of machines, more than a thousand patents. We have the largest amount of patents which is spread all over the industry and that by itself in the future may create a profit center for us. We have technologies nowadays that include inkjet, binderjet, DLP, FDM, ceramic, com composites, electronics, metal, metal casting, polymer, and micropolymer. We have only one technology that exists in this industry that we're still in look for, and we have plans how to reach it, and uh, that's a technology that has to deal with another technology for metals. We do believe very strongly in the metal business. The next slide, slide number eight, shows you these two large acquisitions, why we waited for so long. Look, ladies and gentlemen, since September 21, when we had the money and raised it, those companies that we now acquired were traded at between 15 to 35 times their revenue. 15 to 35 times revenue. And in this whole period, May, September 21 to May 22 to January 23, as the outliers from the different countries here tried to attack us for not spending the cash and for trying to, the, to, distri to distribute the cash to themselves, we waited. We waited as those large transactions started to lose value and lost it steadily over two years until we got to the end of 24 and we bought them both at less than one time, one less, at average one time multiple, one time sales multiple. And we believe we paid the right price and we bought them at the right time because if they were to proceed forward, they would be in trouble, which we believe they wouldn't be able to withstand by staying a, a standalone independent. Now that we brought them together, all three of us together are creating an industry leader, which you see in the next slide, number nine. On the left, you see how we build ourselves. The $56 million is the old nano, which is built from six, small, six seven small acquisitions and 29% organic growth. I'm emphasizing the 56 from 22 to 23 grew 29%, not from acquisitions, from organic growth. And if you read different numbers in the material that the, 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 this, this foreign, foreign company from 
uh, Canada, I think, is publishing uh, <laughs> it's all coming from somewhere that is not the industry, it's not the numbers of the company. So we grew organically. Then we added and we're adding $190 million. All numbers here are based on 2023 performance numbers. That's desktop metal. And we're adding $94 million of Mark Forge so together to create a new $340 million business based on 2023. And I'm telling you right now, you're not going to emphasize the high, the high revenue. We may even reduce the revenue on account of being profitable. If need be, the $340 million will be reduced to numbers where the gross margins will be higher and the profits will come and appear and at multiples of profits will get the share up. In the right side of the slide, you see kind of analysis of uh, five, five, six companies in the industry, public, on the left, the small Voxeljet, Velo, Broadways, which are uh, smaller companies that were public. Uh, two of them, Voxeljet by now is not public anymore. It's squeezed down to uh, off, but off, uh, off, off NASDAQ. Velo is on its way from $77 million of revenue per year to $3 million of revenue per year. And uh, Broadway is, is going down from closer to 100 to less than what what it shows here, and are uh, traded, by the way, in the uh, Paris uh, Stock Exchange. In parallel, you see the three biggest companies in the industry on the right side, Stratasys, 3D System, and yes, us, with $340 million. But look at the difference in the amount of cash that each one of us has. We will be trained $40 million with $470 million of cash on the balance sheet, and the other two, you can see the numbers. That means we have the dry powder to turn the 340 into a profitable and growing 340, not into just revenue, revenue growing by acquisition or otherwise, but no profits. The focus of this company moving forward from into 25 and forward is going to be gross margin and profits in the, top, in the bottom line. And the cash that we have will be used as less as possible to cover losses and as more as pos possible to create profit, to create and generate even more profits. Last slide, which is slide number 10, summarize everything. <laughs> One, promises we made, promises we delivered. Two, we're executing a focused value creation strategy. Value creation, not value destruction. Value creation above what we have today, not liquidation. We're not going to close the company if it's up to us and distribute $2 a share, which is what's left, to the shareholders. Three, nano leadership and the board of directors is, are driving our progress. It is not an amateurish group from somewhere outside the border that is trying to liquidate, to find companies they can liquidate. This is a very serious board and a very serious management, which is now combined from three companies' management soon. And last but not least, Merchinson. Ah, Merchinson is the name has, of these Canadians, has no strategy and six to deprive shareholders of long-term value creation opportunity. Those merchants on are the guys that, during the two years that we were stewards of the cash, our share was traded lower, I agree, like the rest of the industry. So they bought for two and a half dollars a share, uh, their shares, and they think that now they'll distribute the cash and make money. But most of your shareholders, including myself, we bought for more than two and a half dollars a share. So the only way for us to make money is to grow the company and multiple the value of the share to numbers that will have a return on what our cost and the cost of a lot of our retail shoulders, 150,000 in numbers, is not two and a half like Merchison. It's four, like mine, for instance, four and a half, five, six. We need to create higher value than that, and we shall. Last but not least, 
we remind you to vote, please. Vote for what our board recommends for you to vote, and we're not recommending extreme decisions. We're just recommending enabling us to continue what we're doing for you and for ourselves. I am a shareholder like all of you. My upside personally is in growing the share to the numbers we spoke, not to the margins on numbers of two and a half dollars a share. And we are hoping that you will join us in this important vote. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm uh, very happy if we can open this up for questions now. I'll now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star, then one on your telephone keypad. If you're using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. To withdraw your question, please press star, then two. At this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble our roster. And our first question comes from Katherine Thompson with Edison. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I've just got a, uh, I've got three questions. Um, first question is, um, could you give us a bit of detail on the reaction you've had from your customers to the news about your two proposed acquisitions? Um, secondly, just a quick update from a regulatory perspective of where you are with both of the acquisitions and just to confirm that you still expect to complete desktop metal in Q4 and Mark Forged in Q1 of next year. And then thirdly, just to also confirm, it sounds as if what you're saying is that to get to break even EBITDA, which I think you've referenced as being in Q4 of 2026, that that's going to be more through a process of cost synergies rather than revenue synergies. That's the three questions. Yes. Uh, first question, reaction of customers is, and you're asking me, as I said earlier, in the right time because I'm in the uh, Frankfurt uh, from, uh, from next uh, show, so I'm meeting a lot of customers, is extremely excited. I'm speaking not only of customers of Nano, existing customers that are happy to have an ability to have an expanded uh, product line, but I'm now talking to customers of Mark Forge and Desktop Meta, which are coming to me to discuss the future of their product lines. And uh, excitement is all over. You feel the vibration in our booth. I, am, I know it when I'm saying what I'm telling you now because I've been in all the trade shows of the last, or most of the trade shows of the last three years. This is the most exciting one. Secondly, regulatory. Yes, we're finishing the regulatory work. We pretty much finished with the uh, Hardcore Rodino, we finished uh, with um, the vote, the proxy and the vote of Desktop Metal, which all voted for the deal. We are finishing the work with the um, um, CFIUS and uh, expect the transaction with Desktop Metal to close before the end of the year. Uh, expect and hope, and, um, and so much as... Uh, um, uh, Mark Forge, we are a bit behind on, on that because it's, we started later the, 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 the transaction, but KBR, uh, sorry, Hotscot Rodino, HSR is pretty much done. Uh, Cepheus is a parallel process to what we went through, so we hope it's going to be much shorter. And um, the shareholder vote of uh, of um, Mark Forge is supposed to occur in the beginning of uh, I'm sorry, in the beginning of um, December. Hence, we're still hoping to close the deal with them in the first quarter of 2025. And so much as uh I expect that the first few quarters you will see profitability, that's, profitability and especially cash flow that's improving the best, the worst cash flow obviously will be in the month, sorry, or in the quarter when we will merge the three companies together because we, Nano itself, we are already in a very, very good cash, cash flow position, but the other two companies are still burning cash. So the first quarter will be combined cash burn, but 
the minute we get control over the companies, and we are already in plan and discussion with their management, we intend to start to cut expenses dramatically. So uh, when you get to the first of uh, the beginning of 2026, we hope to either show profitability or show cash, uh, cash flow uh, positive uh, or both. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And the next, next question, question comes please. from... Uh, next question comes from Sol Zellman with Jerry Care. Please go ahead. Good morning. Thank you, operators. Thank you, Yoav. Um, uh, Yoav, you spoke about the various aspects that, uh, you know, closing the desktop metal merger, the, uh, the, um, the next step with Mark Forge, which, which, again, the elephant in the room is the fact that uh, there's an AGM right now, and you speak about it asking everybody to vote, but they're, the question, the big question is, if with this, uh, the activists right now, if they're successful installing two new directors into the board, is there any concern of them derailing, killing these transactions? Uh, obviously, this is a big consideration for every shareholder in, in this AGM. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback on that. And you also mentioned the aspects of the CTOs. What is that process? What does it mean for us as, as shareholders? And where is that process going to take us? I will start with the second question. The CFIUS is a typical process by regulatory uh, agency in the United States. We went through a CFIUS, uh, already answered most of the questions. We expect they told us they don't have more questions. So the, the, I'm speaking about the CFIUS with Desktop of Metal, so we expect this to finish in days. And we are hoping that uh, we don't see any, any issue that will stop it unless uh, there's something we don't know, but basically the question and answer uh, processes uh, came to an end as much as uh, CFU supported to us in the last few days, which is good, which means they got answers for all the questions. Uh, then we have to go to CFU with Mark Ford, and I expect that CFU with Mark Ford will be shorter because it's basically it relates to Mark Forge and rather to Desto Metal, so they have to do the CFIUS has to do the checks on Mark Forge, but in the checks on Nano Dimension, they already have done it. So it's a typical process. All the companies that are foreign are going through that. It may take between a month and a half to uh, six months. Uh, we are hoping that it will be closer to two months, to three months, and rather than to six months. And uh, we, it seems like it's moving in the right direction. As much as the elephant in the room, the elephant in the room is not an elephant, it's a, it's, a, it's a cat. The elephant in the room is a cat that wants to invest, wants to dismantle the com company, but all what it dem is it demanding in this, um, in this a AGM is to insert two directors, which are uh, directors, if you look at their background, and I know one of them very well from the past, have very, very checkered past and issues in the past, and they hope that these directors will make some impact, I guess. As I told you, I know this uh, one of these directors, uh, while his checkered past is an honest person, I don't see these directors coming in and destroying the company. Uh, first of all, uh, there will be other six directors that will be a majority, uh, the whole company is eight directors. I hope that they don't get into this uh, the, this board, but even if they will get in the board, it's a minority. Minority cannot affect decisions of the board by vote because of their minority. Plus, once they get into the board, I believe that they will be thinking and worrying about the company, not about the elephant or the cat that got them into the board. So uh, this is about derailing. This is about how decisions are going to be made. How can you derail these deals? I don't even understand. The deals were signed and a, committed of the com a commitment of the company, legal commitment. If you derail these deals as assuming you could by having majority of the board, which they won't have, then it's torturous interference in 
contract that was signed by the company already, committed by the company. So I don't see this being derailed at all. They don't feel with the, the uh, severe activist approach that they're taking that they'll, they'll try to find some way of derailing slash killing it. I mean, that shouldn't be a concern. Well, they, they can also say that they plan to attack Iran and solve the problem of the Middle East. They can, they can claim lots of things. Again, you're at the helm. Uh, we're, we're following that guidance, and we'd like to understand that that's, that's not a concern when we're making our decisions. So I appreciate that feedback. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you the, the truth and the, and the fairness. I am um, a warrior, not from warrior from um, being a fighter. I'm a warrior for being worried. I'm always worried from the unexpected. I'm always getting up in the morning after not sleeping half a night because I'm thinking what could have happened that I didn't take into consideration. I'm worried about uh, events that are happening in the business and if some, some activist like this is claiming that they will derail, then it makes me worry. So I worry and I go to lawyers and I go to advisors and I check and everybody's telling me, you off. You don't have to worry. They can't do it. So that is the message I'm delivering to you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question comes from Felix Ziegler with Felix Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for taking the question. Um, wanted to get a better understanding of the M&A rationale here. Uh, the past five acquisitions for DeepCube, Nanofabrica, uh, Ascentech, uh, Global Inkjet, and Formatech, they don't seem to have been integrated very well, given their revenue growth has really deteriorated under Nano's leadership. All those companies had gross margins of between, I believe it was 55 to 60 percent, as reported by Nano. Uh, but Nano just reported a gross margin of 48.2 percent this quarter. So the synergies didn't seem to really materialize there either. Um, so for Mark Forge and Desktop Metal, um, I think right now they're experiencing negative revenue growth, and they have a gross margin profile that is actually below what Nano currently has and they continue to burn astronomical amounts of investor cash and are therefore on the verge of bankruptcy. So how does it make any sense to be acquiring these businesses with investor cash? I think in your presentation you said the rationale seems to be the low sales multiple, but if we look at a company like Spirit Airlines, which had billions of dollars in revenue and just filed for bankruptcy, uh, it's, it's clear that that method doesn't work very well a low multiple doesn't seem to be enough to justify buying a cash burning business. Um, in addition to that, I think you're defining uh, net cash burn uh, 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 as the... Sir, 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 what's the question? Yeah, so uh, the question here is, um, you know, uh, how is Nano doing what's best for shareholders? This stock hasn't provided any return for shareholders, and it continues to trade below cash um, at a negative okay. enterprise so value. There's, so, so, there's, so, there's the, so there's the so there's the question. Yeah, so, why do you continue employing a strategy that isn't working well for shareholders, and why are you defining your net cash burn in a way that makes it look better than it actually is, in an effort to almost confuse shareholders? Okay, so I'll answer you. First of all, everything you said about the five, the six acquisitions of Nano in the beginning was wrong false, lack of information, not understanding financial statements, not being able to be a sophisticated investor. Those, those companies had lower gross margins when we bought them, had lower revenue when we bought them. All the companies other than um, um, uh, DeepCube, which we never intended to grow its revenue because they didn't have revenue, it's, we, bought the, we bought it only as a technology, grew the revenue and the combined Revenue, I said 10 times we grew 29% in organic growth on the first seven, six, seven acquisitions. So that's first point where you don't know what you're talking about. Point number two, the two companies we're acquiring now is true that they are not performing well. But the business of mergers and acquisition, which is my personal business for the last uh, 30 years, is knowing 
what really you are acquiring and can you create synergies and acquisitions by that improving the performance of the company you're acquiring. And you're acquiring a set of more than 1,000 customers of the two companies. You're acquiring a set of more than 10 technologies which are very advanced, non-existing in other places in the industry. And you're acquiring them and reinforcing and changing the management to focus on profitability. And by the fact that you have three companies now focused in their headquarters in Boston and headquarters in Europe in one place, getting rid of a lot of facilities, getting rid of many, not I shouldn't say getting rid, reducing certain businesses that are not profitable enough and adjusting the number of employees to a number that is justified to a size of a company combining the three companies is the way you create value for shareholders because by now, you, in spite of the fact that you paid low price for each company, you're creating high return for each low price you paid by merging them together properly. So this is the second point where you demonstrated lack of knowledge and principles and the fact that you give me an example of Spirit Airlines, I'll tell you something else. First of all, before I tell you this, the gross margins you mentioned of the company do not fit the gross margin of, of, of Nano. A minute before, you said the gross margin of nano didn't grow. Now, you said the gross margin is nano is higher than those companies. This is not true either. Mark Ford is the gross margin, which is close to 50%, which is exactly like the gross margin of nano, and we're going to take it higher. It is true that desktop metal, with the average gross margin that they have, is lower because they have different kind of businesses, some of them with two low gross margins. Those are the businesses that we're going to stop. Either if we don't improve the gross margins, we'll get out of those businesses and continue with the businesses that fit gross margins as it goes beyond and above 50%. Last example, you gave me Spirit Airlines was losing or whatever. I don't even know how you get to an airline from an industrial business. Let me tell you something. Continental Airlines were not performing so well. Continental Airlines, you remember them? They merged with United. After the merger, the combined performed very well. The reason is when you combine company, change the management, change the, change the, change the strategy, you justify the merger both to yourself as a company and to your shareholders. Thank you very much. Next question. Again, if you have a question, please press star, then one. With no further questions, this concludes our question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to the company for any closing remarks. In closing, I want to thank you again for participating in uh, the conference today. Thank you for your questions, very interesting uh, questions. Some of them gave me, especially the last one, an opportunity to go to a business school and uh, um, basic uh, business principles of how mergers and acquisitions can add value to shareholders. So thank you very much for the last question. This was very helpful for me. And I promise you, shareholders, that I have been working for the last year without a salary. Actually, it's a year and a quarter because my salary was not approved by the people north, some, some of these north of the border activists that uh, refused to approve my uh, Salary. So I work with no salary. My upside is holding shares and being a shareholder like all of you. And I trust and convinced that the right to work on acquisitions by taking companies that have assets and values but are not performing well necessarily because of performance of management together and doing the right thing will add value to you as shareholders more than what you or somebody think the share value 
or the cash under the share, which is by now two and a half dollars, well, the share is traded at 2.1 or 2.2. So we actually have a business coming into being $340 million business, which will be valued based on its performance, and the share will be valued much more than at 2.1, 2.2, or the cash under the share. That's my plan. That's my plan for myself because I'm making money based on the share I'm holding, and I did not receive from the company any free equity, and I hope that you shareholders will join us in this uh, trail and travel towards success. Thank you very much. The conference is now concluded. Thank you for attending Nana Dimensions Quarterly Earnings Conference Call. You may now disconnect.